Nobody at Broken Stripe ever shares that sentiment. We just no, no. Um, so you made a really pretty big announcement today. Why don't you tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, we're very excited. We've uh, uh, announced just about an hour ago the acquisition of uh, Mobiata. Uh, it is the, I'd say, we have a couple of uh, slides up here. It, it's the leading kind of uh, mobile app player out there. Uh, they've got, you see, you see Flight Track, which has been, I think, in the top five of paid mobile paid apps for the past 18 months or so. We actually have the founder here, Ben uh, Pizzez. Where's Ben? I think over here. Yeah. So Ben is, uh, we're welcoming Ben to the uh, It's a wonderful group, a uh, young group of technologists who were um, kind of born on mobile. They know how to use apps. And for us, it was really important when, when, when we think about mobile, I think you can get trapped in thinking about mobile based on where you come from. And where we came from is PC, how you present the booking experience, etc., cetera, uh, on the PC and translating that to mobile. And what was important for us is let's get some people thinking about travel and mobile who don't come from the PC experience. You know, who are just thinking about mobile, who come from it from a very, very different point of view. And we thought bringing that point of view together with the audience and the scale that we have will be an incredible combination, and that's why we wanted to bring uh, Mobiata into the family. You can see that's a Steve Jobs actually demoing one of the Mobiata apps, so that's the ultimate, uh, I think, compliment on, on what a great group of people it is. So we're very excited to to uh, introduce and uh, Mobiata to you and welcome them to the Expedia family. Okay, thank you. So, seeing as you've clearly made a big investment in mobile, you've clearly made it a very big priority, um, could you talk about now, sort of moving forward, how that sort of integrates with the various umbrella of brands that you have at Expedia? I think it's going to integrate and, and, and hopefully it'll create experiences that are completely separate. Uh, I, I think that if if all you're trying to do is look to integrate the mobile experience and make it consistent with, uh, with the PC experience, et cetera, or the Mac experience, the, the desktop experience, you're going to miss out. And if you think about um, uh, new platforms coming online, uh, huge new businesses have been created out of new platforms coming online. Our business uh, and all of our OTA brethren was as a result of, um, of the new platform, internet, broadband, et cetera, coming online. And the players, the offline players, who are trying to translate the offline experience into the online experience, ultimately they didn't succeed because there was a bunch of young people who all they cared about was the, the desktop experience and the internet, et cetera, and they came from that viewpoint. They didn't care about what happened offline, right? So, it's very difficult not to be trapped in the world that you come from. And when we looked at the amazing work that the folks at Mobiata were, were, were doing, they were looking at mobile fundamentally differently. Uh, so I, I do think that one piece of work is going to be introduce a mobile experience that your, uh, uh, that your core experience user base is, is comfortable with, feels comfortable with, looks familiar, etc. And there's a whole different piece of work, which is do something new, do something different. And I think to really do that in a good way, you got to be away from the mothership. And, and uh, hopefully uh, Ben and his team can, can bring that to us, and that's why, that's why uh, we went after it. It's a great group of talent, uh, and it starts from individuals who wanted to break things, and, and hopefully we, we tap that. So obviously our, our thing is chaos is here, in case mm -hmm. you haven't heard. <laughs> Um, so, how do you look at positioning yourself or, or developing that posture? Um, because you can't predict what's going to happen. Um, could you talk a little bit about how you sort of inspire a team and build a culture where you're constantly looking for what's next and how to best position all the brands um, for this chaos that's out there? I think you, you build a, a structure, um, a, a company structure and a culture uh, that is comfortable with change and structured for change. Um, I, I remember uh, talking with, with Steve Coffer at, at TripAdvisor, and we were going through his uh, 2011 plans. And he said, I really don't have a roadmap for you. Is that a bad thing? You know, I'm like, no, it 
it isn't because um, he has structured that group and we try to structure our groups, smaller teams, etc., who are independent, who are working on stuff. And if you've got a roadmap, everything that you're doing in 2011, you're probably in trouble. Right now, there's some infrastructure, big investments that you're trying to make to move yourself to be able to respond to an environment better. Uh, but our preparation is structuring the company so it can move fast. And that's why a lot of times you give up uh, efficiency because of it. I've got, we've got a team at Hotels.com, and we've got a team at Expedia. And guess what? They're working on a lot of feature sets that are quite similar. Should they be working together? Well, you can gain a lot of efficiency there. But I don't want them to because I want them each reacting very quickly to the market dynamics that they see, doing different stuff, trying different stuff. Um, I think that's the best that you can do, and you hope that you've got the right people who can react quickly and do some cool new stuff. Speaking of different teams, I want to sort of transition to a conversation about Europe. Sure. Um, 2009, we lost sort of first place status out there. Um, and you know, with any winning team of high performance individuals losing or becoming, you know, losing the top spot can be demotivating. And you know, on the one hand, you have to balance this sort of forensic analysis of why yeah. losing market share, but on the other hand, you want to keep them focused on moving ahead and not inclining or pointing fingers. It's you know, search marketing as well as supply side as well. Yeah. So, how do you sort of get them to be focused? And, and understanding what they're not maybe doing so well and what they need to be better without sort of getting crippled in, 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 in fighting. Well, that's, that, that, that's a definition of the team, and I think for us it's been mixed, right? This was a year when we officially became the largest travel company in the world. So on a worldwide basis, we're winning, we're gaining share, etc. But we're aware that in Europe, there's a competitor who's growing faster than we are. And, um, you know, I find it motivating. Uh, I'm not happy about it. Uh, our team is not happy about it. We're growing. The business is very healthy. But we find it incredibly motivating to know that, you know what, we're growing at 15, 20%, but that's not enough. There's more. Uh, and if you execute really well, there's, there's a bigger prize there. Uh, and as long as you don't get into kind of the infighting, et cetera, as long as you all recognize that you're on one team uh, and one person's success begets another person's success, I think you're fine. Um, and at Expedia, you have that attitude. You know, we still feel like where we were 10 years ago, where we're a small company and we're world leaders. Um, I, I don't like being, you know, I like being the biggest travel company in the world. I, I, I don't want to feel that way. But we don't feel that way. Uh, and I think that hunger keeps it going. And hopefully it'll, it'll be good for us. It'll be good for our supply partners. It'll be good for the ecosystem. Taking a step on Expedia's, a step back and looking at Expedia's strategy in Europe, mm -hmm. the cooking's phenomenal success with the commission model. Um, you made the acquisition you then right, yes. and you introduced sort of your commission model on Expedia, but what we haven't seen you do is move away from the core merchant model. And one might ask why you haven't just made the switch, considering that the commission model is clearly so successful in Europe. Is it that you're going for someone else? Is it, you know, to focus on the tour operator business, perhaps, the higher margin business? Well, you know, the, the, the merchant model works very well for larger established markets in Europe. Uh, bigger box hotels that are more sophisticated, that want uh, the package travel business, the, the long lead time package travel, etc. It works great then. Um, there are areas, secondary, tertiary markets, smaller hotels, where the merchant model doesn't particularly work well. And what we've gone into is it's essentially audience segmentation. We want to give the right product to the right customer. And we've been focusing our easy manage agency product on secondary and tertiary markets. And the share of easy manage bookings in those secondary and tertiary markets has been increasing pretty significantly. As we um, look now that we've integrated all those models together, Vendor is essentially agency only, and hotels and Expedia are both, we'll get to measure one against the other and do much more testing and learning on where is it appropriate to go agency, where is it appropriate to go merchant. I don't think it's either or. You know, Asian markets still where uh, collection is a problem, that's a merchant market. Uh, rate parity isn't really a huge issue there, et cetera. That's going to be a merchant market. So I think if you want to be a global player building global distribution systems, you kind of have to have an agency and merchant model. And the question of the relative weight is going to depend on the consumer. The consumer
consumer is going to drive that. We're not going to decide I want to be a big merchant or I want to be a big agency. If you don't listen to the consumer, you're, you're going to lose out. So when you're, you, you mentioned the need for flexibility, but the reality is you kind of have to still you know, put out your forecast, do your budgeting, yeah. do your planning. So how do you set goals, especially for a merchant market business that could be growing 100, 200, 200 percent a year? How do you sort of measure um, your underperformance or overperformance in those types of markets? You look at overall market growth, you look at uh, the growth of one specific market against other markets, etc. You know, it's... Um, I think that you set, you set goals in order to incent behaviors. Mm -hmm. So we don't get too caught up on are you, you know, if you go into a planning exercise for the sake of getting to the right number, mm -hmm. that's not the purpose of the planning exercise for us. The purpose of the planning exercise is um, you look at the numbers, how do those affect the investment decisions that I'm going to make? How does that affect what technologies I invest in and what technologies I don't invest in? Uh, where am I putting my people, etc. So we try not to get too caught up on individual numbers, and especially in the emerging markets. Are you going to grow 50% or are you going to grow 100%? The answer is who knows. The point is you want to grow, you want to be improving your product, and you want to be driving the emerging market. So the American orbit conflict really puts a spotlight on What American orbit conflict? <laughs> Uh, I, I think as a business grows and matures in general, and 
harvests will eventually mature. It's still at a, I'd say, pretty nice growth phase. Consolidation is inevitable. It's, it's just what happens. Um, so, will there be consolidation? I think yes. Does there need to be consolidation? I don't think so. The, the travel marketplace is so vast, uh, and the, the kind of the, the tailwind of internet adoption is still flowing so strongly, not only in the US, but in Europe, Asia, Latin America, et cetera, that there's plenty of growth for the players who are out there. But I think consolidation will come naturally. I just think it will take time. So the hotel tax issue has been an ongoing, yes. ongoing miniature battle by municipalities. Very local issue. <laughs> yeah. um, has it been, uh, is it that serious for you, or is it that much of a risk for you that you would ever consider shifting away from merchant to commission just to avoid the challenges there? I don't think, listen, it, it's, uh, for us it, it's a simple issue, which is there are laws out there and we believe that the laws say that, uh, the majority of the laws say that taxes are owed based on, uh, uh, by hotel operators. If we're not a hotel operator, we're the furthest thing from a hotel operator as an SMP. So we don't think we're subject to those laws. And, and so it's a simple legal issue. To the extent uh, that the laws are different or the laws have changed, we'll deal with that. And it's not a real issue between merchant and agency one way or the other. Uh, the model is not as, as, as significant as just what are the laws and are we subject to, to the local laws and you know I think uh, we would be doing our shareholders and our customers a disservice if we can protect ourselves. So when you switch through a little bit and talk about a new sort of business model um, and the flash sale concept I heard sure, yeah. through Khan CEO today and um, through TripAdvisor started to make away mm -hmm. and sort of dip your toe in the water. What do you think private sales would mean to Expedia um, at this point, and, and how are you thinking about the product in general? Well, I think it'll be uh, it, it'll be a different way for um, uh, for hoteliers and suppliers to sell distressed inventory, um, and and you see new product come out. You know, Travelzoo a couple of years ago was a different way. Uh, we built our own product, Travel Ticker, that has been very very successful. Uh, and now with TripAdvisor, we're experimenting with Sneak Away, and I'd say the early results are actually pretty encouraging. We're getting fan mail from our hotels, and we're getting fan mail from our users, and that's a pretty good combination. So I think that it'll be a, a nice channel. Um, I think it'll be that, it'll be a channel. I think it's a good opportunity, uh, but you also have to appreciate, you know, the size and scale of the OTAs ourselves, travel loss, and what price line are, you know, that, that serves, we are big, mass market, huge volume players. And around us, small ecosystems are, are going to develop and, and you know, we'll watch this one and, and we're, just, we're participating in one model. Uh, and based on that experience, we'll decide whether we want to go deeper into it or not. Dara, we have an audience question. Sure. Hi, Dara. Uh, yesterday, the three words that were thrown out were social, travel, and Facebook. Um, what's your stance and what's the vision Expedia has for that vision? Um, I, I'd say it's too early for us to, to develop a vision. Uh, I'd say we're experimenting, and, and I'd say the first area where we're experimenting, I'm, I'm sure probably Steve Coffer talked about our TripAdvisor, is TripAdvisor is inherently user-generated content, and when we talked about, well, how do we work on the, in the Facebook arena, we said TripAdvisor is probably our first brand to work on it, to understand it, and they've developed a very interesting feature, which is Trip Friends. They, they, you know, you go to TripAdvisor and you see the wisdom of the masses. Now what we're trying to do is use Facebook to get you the wisdom of your friends, etc. Based on how that does, we will also look into what else we do in the social categories on the on the online travel agencies, etc. I would say the majority of our activity this year going forward is to look whether it's a to look at social as to whether it's a great customer acquisition tool and whether it's a good way of locking in your core customers. Uh, and we're experimenting right now, but I'll tell you, it's a heck of a lot more interesting than, than it was two years ago. Two years ago, I would have to force my marketing people to spend money, and now people are really, there, there's some pretty interesting solutions that are coming out for So, thinking back to mobile now, um, to carry this back, um, yesterday we spoke to Barney and you, and uh, we asked him a question about sort of how big mobile is at this point in time, yeah. and how fast it's growing. 
Um, so we asked when, um, sort of how far out do we think mobile will reach sort of double digit percentage of, of total gross booking. So um, Barney's at the mark at 12 months, Hughes at the mark at 18 months. What do you think it is? I think it's probably between 12 and 24 months. I don't think it'll happen in the next 12 months, but it could uh, easily happen. I think traffic may get there uh, within 12 months, I'd say the earlier portion, and, and then I think transactions will follow. Um, and some of the emerging markets, I think you'll see kind of higher, faster penetration, et cetera. But the, the growth is explosive, and, and I think the big question for us is, is it, um, is it consumers who would have booked on, uh, on a desktop or booking on mobile, or is it additive? Uh, and, and I'd say the early results, we're seeing some behavior that's different. It's, it's closer in, it's, uh, it, it's in market, et cetera. Uh, and that kind of activity is fundamentally different from the activity that we see with our historical users, so we're pretty encouraged by it. So what's your strategy for Asia beyond China? Uh, it's it, it's really to it's a very broad strategy and, and, and I, I would caution um, Asia's work right it's it, it's the Asian markets are so different that Australia is completely different from Japan it's completely different from India totally different from Indonesia etc so you know we don't have an Asian strategy right we're, we're looking at each significant country understanding uh, what our strategy is, uh, is on a country by country basis. I would say uh, Australia is a big target market. Japan is a terrific outbound market that we're doing very well in. And we're going to get in very deeply through Hotels.com and Southeast Asia, the other countries, etc. cetera. Uh, you have search as a platform to enter. Um, uh, there are a lot of consistencies between what we build in US and Europe and uh, with Asia. And then what you have to do is go to each local country and understand, you know, build out payment types, et cetera, to be more uh, locally relevant. But it's a formula that we've done before. Uh, I think it'll take some time, but it's an incredibly exciting opportunity. Dara, another audience question? Yeah, Paul well, was here yesterday talking about vacation rentals. Yes. And yeah, that's a gigantic marketplace that is significantly underserved by the OTAs. What's your strategy for vacation rentals? Uh, vacation rentals initially, if you look at the, the that business, um, I'd say the listings model has been the model that has taken off uh, most quickly, and that's the model that we are going after through TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor has built a terrific vacation rentals product. We added to it through the acquisition of uh, uh, holiday lettings in the UK, uh, and we're trying to bring TripAdvisor's traffic and ability to gain reviews and user trust together with uh, building out a listings business that will get us the kind of network effect uh, that you see on home away, for example. That's the build. As to when you get into transactions, I think that's coming.